Roxo Media House. Have affected JP, but he was setting up for a back shoulder. Mm, Look at like. Bailey go! Imani Bailey touchdown. Well, it's a wonderful life, Mr. Bailey. <laughs> Welcome back to State of the Frogs, the season finale. I'm your host, J.B. Wilson, as always, and with much respect, head coach Sonny Dykes. Coach, the season ended Saturday, in, or excuse me, Friday in Norman. It was 69-45. It was an, actually an awesome effort by the offense, but in the defense, obviously, had a little work to do. But please talk, talk to us about yeah, that. Yeah, you know, uh, tough game. Uh, got off to a, a rocky start. Had a hard time getting Oklahoma stopped. Um, but to our players' credit, you know, we got, got back in the game. Mm -hmm. um, second half, had a couple of different opportunities to, to cut it to one score and just couldn't get a stop, uh, couldn't quite get it done when we needed to, to to be able to completely get back in the game. So really rough start, gave up a bunch of big plays early in the game, um, got on our heels defensively, had a hard time getting off the field. You know, you look at the stats, Oklahoma was six of eight on third down in the first half and one of one on fourth down. Um, so we just couldn't get any stops mm -hmm. and got a little bit of a slow start on offense and dug ourselves a big hole. Um, you know, had a chance right before the half to, to score a touchdown right there and ended up having to kick a field goal. Felt like the field goal mattered just because we had missed an extra point earlier in the game. Mm -hmm. So long story short, tough outing. Uh, but again, you know, one thing I love about this team is they showed fight all year. We, it certainly wasn't the kind of year we wanted to have. Um, but the guys played hard and they'd have a lot of pride. Uh, and, you know, they love being a horned frog. It means a lot to them. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're disappointed. We've got a lot of work to do. But, but the good thing is, you know, we, we know what we need to address. We know what we need to fix. And uh, we're busy doing that right now. In respect to those things you mentioned, uh, the, the offense from the, the layman's eye seems like the offense is is finding itself, and they're they're scoring lots of points. And yeah, yeah. You know, we had a rough start, kind of offensively. We got off to a good start, game one, but then went through a stretch where we were still kind of trying to get an identity and figure out who mm -hmm. we were. Um, you know, we didn't run the ball as well as we needed to consistently this year. You know, we had some good rushing efforts uh, at, at, at some games where we had some yards, but we weren't as efficient running the ball as we need mm -hmm. to be. You know, we need to have fewer negative yards and to have more runs that are, you know, three or more yards. And so we weren't as efficient as we need to be. But, um, you know, I thought the quarterback position got better. You know, I think as the season rolled along, obviously we got more experience mm -hmm. there. Um, you know, Chandler started the year and he really performed well at times. And, um, and then once he got injured, Josh came in and, and his first time starting and did a really good job of, of you know, a, a difficult situation and continuing to improve. And, and I think as, as the season rolled along, you know, I think everybody started to get settled in and felt like, you know, okay, here we go at that position. So feel good about, about the quarterback spot. Um, I think the receivers and quarterbacks begin to get on the same page. You know, I think Jared Wiley started to emerge as the season progressed and it was good to see him, you know, finish the way he finished. And, you know, you look at the last couple of ball games, we want, ran the ball better. Um, thought our pass protection for the most part was good and we were able to score a bunch of points you know I think that that you go look at second half of Texas we scored 20 in that game we scored 42 against Baylor uh, scored 45 against Oklahoma so you know I think we're trending in the right direction for sure and I've seen you mention this <clears throat> at your press conferences four of your losses were by a score or less yeah so. yeah it was a frustrating season that way I mean I think you know, I think everybody that had a bad season is probably saying the same thing. Um, but, but, but it's the truth. I mean, certainly, you know, we had a week one, we had a chance to win, had the ball at the end of the game, um, you know, couldn't drive it down and, and win. Had the same thing against West Virginia. Mm -hmm. Had the same thing against Texas Tech. Um, you know, just kind of over and over and over again, had opportunities to be able to, to win ball games at the end of games and either couldn't get a stop or, or you know, couldn't take advantage of a two minute opportunity uh, down the stretch and frustrating for us. I don't know that anybody works two minute offense as much as we do. And it just seemed like this year it was a struggle. We were so good at it the year before, um, you know, but a lot of that had to do, I think, with experience and guys that haven't done it before. and and uh, didn't have as much of that this year, but we got to do a better job. Mm -hmm. Well, now you get a little rest and you get to recoup and figure out how to solve the, some of these issues. Yeah, yeah, I think, I, think, I think it's pretty clear, you know, some things that we need to do and ways that we need to improve. And, and, you know, I think the one thing people ask me all the time is how do you evaluate your program? And, I mean, truly, it's an everyday thing. I mm -hmm. think that we, you know, every day I, I go home and I think about, okay, what can we do better? What do we need to do better? You know, I've been um, 
have had 36, 38 meetings the last two days with coaches and personnel and players and outgoing senior interviews and you know all the stuff have a, have a lot of information that I think will will help us get better and um, you know we're we're excited I think we're excited about our future um, you know we gave our players off this week uh, we'll start meeting and working with our players uh, next week on Monday start off season and I think we have a great plan moving forward and and I know that we're anxious and ready to get going would off season entail some lifting and running yeah and yeah we'll start we'll get in the weight room and <clears throat> on Monday and and you know a big thing for us is going to be to continue to build our culture uh, refine some things within that um, you know obviously recruiting is going to be mm -hmm. really really important it's dead until Friday and then guys will start to go on the road Friday uh, we'll start to host transfers the following week and in a, a big host of high school kids coming in as well so busy couple of weeks um, you know gearing up for for early signing period and then uh, transfer stuff as well so going to be a really busy time of the year for, for us and and uh, never really seems to slow down too much. Beautiful. Thank you, Coach. We'll be right back with the student question of the week brought to you by friends at Railhead Barbecue. Simply the best barbecue in Fort Worth. Dine-in, catering, or drive through 2900 Montgomery, just off I-30. Remember, the best barbecue in Fort Worth is at Railhead Smokehouse. Welcome back to State of the Frogs with your head coach, Sonny Dykes. Uh, this week's question comes from Avery. I'm a junior from Keller, Texas, and I'm a dietetics major. I'm Danielle, I'm from Chicago, Illinois, and I'm also a junior and also a dietetics major. <laughs> and Coach Dykes, we have a question for you. Do you have any plans for the holidays? Um, you know, holiday plans, usually uh, last year we were working. Um, I think we had, if I'm not mistaken, I believe we had practice on Christmas Day uh, last year. I think we were traveling or maybe had just arrived in, in Phoenix. But um, it's going to be the first holidays that I haven't been working in a long time, but, but that's, uh, that's okay. Um, you know, I would imagine we'll spend it at home. I think that's the one thing that our family and I have talked about. Usually we're on the road in a hotel room somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I think this year we're going to try to stay home and, and uh, kind of try to have a normal Christmas the best that we can. But um, hopefully it's going to be the last normal Christmas we have for a long time. We'll be right back to wrap up State of the Frogs with your head coach, Sonny Dykes. Energy does everything for us. It's all-encompassing. We're all benefiting and affected from it. And it is something that we all need to know about. It is the glue that holds everything together. TCU is powering what matters, our future. We don't just talk about what's needed. We focus on results. The Ralph Lowe Energy Institute is creating a world where energy is affordable, sustainable, and reliable. You know, we wouldn't be able to do the things we were able to do this year without the Flying Tea Club. So we got to continue to, to get people involved. It's it's more important right now than it's ever been. Flying Tea is special. It's, it's, it's the best thing that I've encountered in college. It allows us to be able to offset a lot of the costs that our scholarships aren't able to cover. And people like winning, invest in, in, in the Flying Tea Club and NIL. Uh, it's almost a necessity now in uh, the college football world. I mean, you got to kind of invest uh, in the programs, and what you put in is what you get out. Welcome back to State of the Frogs with your head coach, Sonny Dykes, the last segment of this year's uh, program. Coach, you mentioned about recruiting and what's going to come, the regrouping. Can you speak a little bit about uh, maybe you, you mentioned in your press conferences, uh, spring ball and offseason yeah. might look different. Yeah, yeah, I think um, – yeah, you know, as you said earlier, I mean, this is going to get ready to be, honestly, the busiest time of the year for us, even more so than, than um, you know, than the season. Just traveling, getting on the road, trying to see recruits. You know, we're going to sign uh, a number of, of high school kids early and also to, um, you know, hosting transfers. And so it's going to be a busy couple of weeks. I feel like we're way ahead of where we've been in the past in mm -hmm. terms of, of identifying transfers and, and opening lines of communication to guys as they have gone in the portal. Um, and, you know, and, and have a great head start. I think we're way ahead of, of where we've been in the past. So really excited about that. Obviously, we feel like we have a really strong high school recruiting class. I think we'll have uh, some more good news on the transfer front and, and high school recruits here in the new future as well. So, you know, I think we have momentum. I think, you know, TCU sells itself. And then, you know, we'll, we'll have a little bit of a break over the holidays and then back at it really on January 3rd. Uh, mm -hmm. That's when the transfer portal opens back up. We'll start hosting more uh, transfers for a couple of weeks and begin school in January and then back at it. So, you know, that January period will be important from, again, a transfer standpoint, but also trying to get a head start on the on the 2025 recruiting class in January, uh, last several weeks of, of, of January. 
sign that class and then we'll start spring ball in, in March. And, uh, you know, I think the big thing with us to spring ball is, is, you know, we've got to get a lot of things refined and, and a lot of things that we have to improve on. But again, I think this team that's coming back is going to be experienced. We've got a lot of guys back that have been through some battles. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, again, we have a pretty clear plan on what we need to do to, uh, to address our needs and improve and get better. Is it a fair question to ask what type of position player are you looking for in, most, in the most needed type of position players? Oh, I think it's always going to be linemen. You know, it's always uh, offensive and defensive linemen. It's always, you know, corners. That's always a position uh, of need. You can't have enough of those of those spots. So, mm -hmm. you know, we'll always be looking to, uh, to improve those areas and address those needs. Coach, in, 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 a, in an attempt to add a little levy to the situation, your dad, Spike, he's been through. He was been through a lot of ups and downs throughout his career. How how would he how would he think about something that's just happened? If you could, yeah, yeah. I think. I mean, look. I think we all were disappointed in the season that we had. I mean, I think you know, our job as coaches is, is to get the very most out of our players, and I felt like that we we did that the year before, and, and that was mission accomplished. And don't, most years you don't really feel like that, but I think with the way that t thing unfolded and. You know, to go 12-0 and 0 in the regular season in year one and have the guys play at the level that we played at, I felt like we really uh, got the most out of our guys. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, this year, don't feel like we did a, a good job of doing that. And so I think that's, that's what coaching is. It's, you know, it's finding a way to make whatever team, whatever you have, those, those ingredients to try to bake the best, the best cake with those ingredients. Mm -hmm. And don't feel like we did that this year, and, and I think we gotta got to get better at that. But, but we will, and, and again, we have a plan to address what we need to address. And... Uh, and move forward. But, you know, uh, you look at last year and you say, you know, uh, seven and one in one score games this year, 0 and four. Um, you know, those are, that's tough. And we got to get better at the little details. And when you, when you lose that many close ball games, you know, it comes down to the turnovers and red zone execution and um, two minute offense and all the stuff that we've talked about. And so we just got to get better at those things and, and just overall continue to, to improve our team, develop players recruit guys, create competition, and, and become a tougher football program. All right. Well, Coach, from all of us at Frogs today and, and, and State of the Frogs, we appreciate your time this season. We appreciate your candor. It's been fun watching from the inside a little bit here, but thank you for the time. Yeah, no, thank you guys. Appreciate Over. you guys supporting TCU and what you mean to, to TCU football. We'll be here watching in, in the wings, so thank you, Coach. Okay, thank you. Appreciate, appreciate you. you. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Roxo Media House.